Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, what a great pleasure and honor it is to stand before you on this occasion, the marriage rite for Eric and Carrie. My name is Daniel Ruin, and I will be your presider for the duration of this service. Eric and Carrie welcome all of you with open hearts, desiring you to feel fully welcome. No matter who you are or what your traditions may be, there will be opportunities in the service for you to participate, though, with song, response, ritual, and movement. I and they hope you will engage with the service in ways that are the most meaningful and comfortable for you. But we also want to make it clear that you don't have to participate at all. Your simple presence and witness is, in and of itself, a great treasure to Eric and Carrie. And so at this time, I ask that the assembly silence thy cell phone. <laughs> and now we begin this celebration with Eric and Carrie's procession.
please follow along with me on page two of your bulletins. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now, this part of the wedding service always threw me for a loop before I became a pastor. It's called the Declaration of Intention, and it's our way of making sure that we're all here for the reasons we say we are, to enjoy the couple and you, the assembly, into a solemn agreement that says, yes, we are of sound mind and body, and we mean to get married this afternoon. Amen? <laughs> so if you dislike weddings, and it seems like the wedding is over after we do this, if not, I'm sorry, there's much more celebration to come. And now, Eric and Carrie have come to make their marriage vows in the presence of God and of this assembly. The uniting of these men in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy, for the help and comfort they give one another in prosperity and adversity, and that their love may be a blessing to all whom they encounter. Let us now witness their promises to each other and surround them with our prayers, giving thanks to God for the gift of marriage, and asking God's blessing upon them that they may be strengthened for their life together and nurtured in the love of God. Eric, will you have Carrie to be your husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? If so, please respond, I will. I will. Carrie, Will you have Eric to be your husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others? Be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. If so, please respond, I will. Families, friends, and all those gathered here with Eric and Carrie, will you support and care for them, sustain and pray for them in times of trouble, give thanks with them in times of joy, honor the bonds of their covenant, and affirm the love of God reflected in their life together? If so, please respond, we will. We will. Thank you. <laughs> I think we can proceed. And now God be with you. Gracious God, you sent your beloved Jesus Christ into the world to reveal your love to all people. Enrich Eric and Carrie with every good gift, that their life together may show forth your love, and grant that at the last we may all celebrate with Christ the marriage feast that has no end. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, let all say amen. 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 You may now be seated as we hear God's holy word. selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. 
Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard the quality of God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you are able for the gospel acclamation.
Then the father said to him, My son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate in the truth, because this brother of yours was dead, and he has come back to life. He was lost and has been found. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ.
that she researched the word prodigal and she was stunned. Now the meaning of the word varies, but when you open your dictionary, you find that the word prodigal has several connotations. Prodigal means extravagant. Prodigal means ravenous. Prodigal means profuse, wasteful, bounteous, lavish. And Grace and Matthew realized the title that had been given had not been given by Jesus. It doesn't appear anywhere in the original text to call the younger son the prodigal son. So Grace and Matthew decided that if anyone was prodigal by definition in this parable, it was not the son, it was the father. It was the father. The father's grace was prodigal. It was a prodigious, extravagant, ravenous grace. It was profuse. It was wasteful. It was bounteous. It was lavish. When Eric and Carrie and I, when we started talking about today and this worship service, the most moving part of your story as a couple was how you shared with me that you were the older sons in your families, and how you two were expected to be the responsible sons. You two were expected to be the informed sons. You two were expected to be the sons in charge, and while it was and is an important role, a blessed role, it is an exhausting role nonetheless. And you shared with me how you didn't know how and when you could ever really let your guard down. That older son guard down. Anyone else? I was right all along, you had learned to say to yourselves as older sons. I knew I couldn't trust you. It was a mistake to risk love and grace. I can't be vulnerable with you or anyone else. I am all alone. But dear brothers, the reason you're here today in front of all of these people is not because of your powers of older sonship. The reason you're here today is not because you two applied your older son intellect and your older son responsibility and then decided now is the acceptable time to wed. <laughs> now is the acceptable time to choose a partner who is reasonable and responsible and safe. No! No. I know you two are here because you were disarmed by a prodigal grace. An extravagant disarmament. A love that, in each of your hearts, in different moments, brought you to your knees. In that moment, or moments, when you realize, maybe I can finally let my guard down. Maybe I can finally be vulnerable with someone in the way I've always yearned for, a prodigal grace. Grace from Peter. Grace from Aaron. A grace that welcomed you, Eric, welcomed you home. And a grace that welcomed you home here as well. Now, I'm a white Lutheran preacher, which means I'm culturally conditioned to preach short homilies at weddings. <laughs> I told Eric and Gary at our first meeting that they shouldn't worry, that I won't preach long in the wedding, that my homily will be three minutes at the most. But when Gary heard this, he recorded.
with Eric and Carrie as a strong gay couple serving this church, blessing this church, forgiving this church, and all churches by example, showing it prodigal grace. Your love and faith is more prodigious than the church's love because you two show the grace of the Father, especially today. And therefore, you become what the church should have been all along because you are willing to embrace the church over and over again to welcome it back time and time again in its brokenness and make it new. In all its younger son disappointment, you welcome the church home with extravagant, many would say wasteful grace by your blessing of this space today. But you know, your prodigal grace extends beyond the institution of the church this afternoon. It extends its offensive, lavish love to us and to the whole world. An interracial gay couple with different religious backgrounds, you are saying to the world, don't look surprised by her. You are saying to the world, a world which has not welcomed you, a world where you had to fight for your true self, a world that keeps coming back at you again, another round of discrimination and lies, a world that rages at you with the words of the older brother, you were never meant to be. You and your interracial and gay love cannot be trusted. It was a mistake to risk love and grace on you. We cannot be vulnerable with you or anyone else. We will isolate you. We will oppress you. We will attack you. But God's prodigal grace, the extravagance of God's higher power, it dances in the face of such darkness. Amen? Amen. It dances, which is the dance we are tasked to host this very afternoon. In the wake of the terrorist attack at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church that occurred in South Carolina on Wednesday, Chris and Cameron, the children of Pastor Sharonda Singleton, one of the nine victims, they spoke to the media yesterday. Their mother, Sharonda, she was a pastor, high school athletic coach, and a speech therapist. She was gunned down by a sick white terrorist after having been welcomed into their Bible study. Chris, Pastor Sharonda's daughter, was quoted as saying to the media, I feel a lot of love. I'm a little bitter, but I am overwhelmed with love, said her daughter. Then Cameron, Sharonda's son, said, we already forgive the killer for what he's done because love is stronger than hate. And his sister came right in after him and repeated the line, yes, she said, love is stronger than hate. How much deeper, how much broader or towering for the prodigal grace of God yet than that in this moment when these Christians who are given every right to speak the words of vengeance and cold anger Yet they can only bear witness to the prodigal grace of Jesus, for that is how their mother raised them. That is how they were raised. And so do you two raise us up as an assembly today, as we desperately need a sign of prodigal grace. Your marriage, which you will always remember as being held with the South Carolina church terrorist attack on one side. And the pride weakened up coming on the other. Your marriage stands in a kind of prodigal defiance. Amen? Amen? A prodigal defiance in the face of our country's sins of racism, slavery, and LGBTQ oppression. In prodigal defiance. It is a union that will not be denied. Amen? Amen. A union that is extravagant in the face of racism. A union that is lavish in the face of heterosexism. A union that is profuse in the face of hatred and confusion and the ongoing apathy of our society to fight for justice and to change this empire that we live in, this empire of blood and greed. Their union, which is ravenous, it will devour all our hopelessness and despair this afternoon. It will dare us to dance today to raise our voices, to declare victory, even as it was declared on the cross. A prodigal grace standing in prodigal defiance. And in that great gift to all of us, 
who are gathered, no matter our creed, no matter our beliefs or our ways, how can we not stand with these two brothers as their friends and families and say, we bear witness to the sign of you two brothers who demonstrate the prodigal grace in your very bodies and in your public courage to join together in faith, hope, and love. It is in this event that we are all blessedly reminded of the prodigal nature of life itself, that, that this day and every day is an opportunity to get our prodigal on. Amen. Amen. To get our prodigal on, to revel in the gift of this world, to find joy in all our struggles, to lift our heads up from our devices and our daily grinds and our complaints and receive the prodigal gifts of all life as we know it. This prodigal marriage, this prodigal family, this prodigal day, the prodigal moment, the prodigal kiss, the prodigal fight, the prodigal embrace, the prodigal dance, the prodigal protest, the prodigal discussion, the prodigal party, the prodigal vocation, the prodigal organization, the prodigal activism, the prodigal sadness, the prodigal lament, the prodigal memory, the prodigal involvement, the prodigal truth, the prodigal day. I've never had that happen in mostly white silly.
one another. Eric, please repeat after me. In the presence of God and this community. In the presence of God and this community. I, Eric, take you carry. I, Eric, take you carry. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. In joy and in sorrow. In joy and in sorrow. In plenty and in want. In plenty and in want. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Carrie, please repeat after me. In the presence of God, I carry, take you, Eric. I carry, take you, Eric. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. From this day forward. In joy and in sorrow. In plenty and in want. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. May we have the rings. We give you thanks, O God of grace, for your love and faithfulness to your people. May these rings be symbols of the promise Eric and Carrie have made with each other through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let all say amen. Amen. Eric, please repeat after me. Carrie, I give you this ring. Carrie, I give you this ring. As a sign of my love and faithfulness. As a sign of my love and faithfulness. Carrie, please repeat after me. Eric, I give you this ring. Eric, I give you this ring. As a sign of my love and faithfulness. As a sign of my love and faithfulness. And now receive this blessing. Gracious God of the new line. God of the stubborn sea, oh, God of the power of perfect and faithful and love, remind these brothers of your daily role in their union. Refresh them every day with a reliance on your gospel of grace. Renew them through hearing your word, receiving your sacraments, and heeding your calls for joyful struggle to make a more just and trustworthy world. And finally, recreate them. Bless their transformations. Bless their differences. Bless their dance as two of your beloved followers. Call them always toward you so that your higher power may walk with them through all the blinding joy and all the deafening wilderness until that day when the shroud of this life will be torn away and we will all see clearly and live anew. Let all say amen. Amen. Thank you. 
point and say, look, hear and say, ah, oh. taste and say, wow, what a benefit of the heaven's joy in life. In the press of daily life, may you know the blessing of time and attention for one another, that love may deepen and flourish. Life is often hard. May the yoke that you assume today empower you to lift and pull together as a team, thereby making the load less burdensome, the task more soul-nourishing, and the outcome more graciously received. In the twists and turns of life, howling winds and jaded edges of every sort, may you be blessed with patience and kindness, resilience, insight, gratitude, and great love, enough to carry you through to safe and healing partners. Relationships are messy and complicated. On the farm where I was raised, my father's arc welder did its work by bringing close, but always with a critical space between, two highly charged points. The energy, light, and heat is generated by the difference between the two. May you trust the arc of power that is created today as you draw together in this marriage. And when disappointments and disillusionment come and threaten to make a home in your hearts, may you be blessed with the memory of all that drew you to each other. And all and all that you most love and enjoy in each other's company. Life is short and precious. May the dawn of each new day find you see the beauty in each other as if for the first time, and discover you reflecting each other's beauty back to him, so that he may remember what is true about him. And may you find the grace, compassion, and generosity of spirit that you will with all your resolve, work with all your power, to release the beauty, magic, energy, gifts, gratitude, humor, talents, courage, resilience, and mojo <laughs> that are your love's gifts to you, to your marriage, and to the world. Congregation, may stand for the prayers. People of God, will you pray with me? We praise you, Holy One, for this most glorious day, for music that opens our hearts and inclines our ears toward you, we tell you our gladness. For the gathering of the beloved, family, friends, and faithful, we give you thanks. For in the warmth of their faces, we are reminded that you are here too. In the nervous stress that has built up to this day, and all the conversations about what people would wear and what we would eat and what words would be said, your Holy Spirit was there too, prodding and testing through creative conflict and giving ease that today we might be lilies of the valley, birds of the sky. We thank you for the hospitality of this building which shelters us and for the risks this congregation has taken to be open to the many ways you call your people into love. Perhaps this is one of the last weddings this building will contain, but we know that the work of offering hospitality and of modeling the prodigal love of Jesus Christ will continue in the places you send to your church. Even as we soak in the joy of this time, we also acknowledge some troubles this day may bring. 
Why does our country not yet fully recognize the commitments and strengths loving partners of the same sex may bring? Though this church has offered a full welcome, we lament that other faith communities still shut their doors to lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender persons. And as we love Carrie and Eric so much here today, we know there are others who also love them so much, but could not figure out how to love them and love you and me in the sanctuary today. We do not give up on the power of love to transform. And so we pray today for our country, for the Supreme Court as Pride Weekend approaches and justices grapple with words to say about marriage. Today we mourn with Emmanuel AME and for congregations that grapple in worship today and tomorrow with the violence experienced there. We give thanks for the courageous testimony of those who love the victims of the violence and the ways their faith has helped to hold them in their loss. Words may flow freely today, but pain and grief will continue to unfold in the lives of the survivors, the community, and the country. What we do know is that you will be present in our pain. In Jesus Christ, you know the experience of persecution and suffering and have a special presence with those who feel that too. Make us bold in our ways of loving, O oh God. Help our love subvert the powers of hatred and violence in the world and even those we absorb into our own hearts. May we be willing to risk what feels comfortable for deeper intimacy. May we be willing to consider the possibility of being wrong, even when we are certain of our righteousness. Give us the courage to love ourselves as we inhabit our own bodies, each of us fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. Instill in us the wonder in the other that inspires us to rediscover passion and admiration. Let us follow in discipleship of Jesus as we consider a love that subverts the voices that would deal violence and separation. To you, O oh God, our mother and our father, we offer our lives, our service, and our love. Receive what we give, and by your Holy Spirit, shape and transform it for the renewal of the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of God be with you always. Share a sign of God's peace as you feel comfortable doing so.
saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood that is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again.
Please rise for the blessing. God of the dance, God of the new wine, God of the feast, we give thanks that you have fed us once again with this foretaste of the feast to come. Strengthen us through this gift to serve our neighbor with joy, that all may come to see your glory reflected in the lives of your people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, let all say amen. amen. And now the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another. Amen. amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Let all say amen. And now, beloved, it's that time. It is my great pleasure to present to you, for the first time as a married couple, Carrie Jenkins and Eric Christensen, the assembly may offer acclamation with applause. Thank you. 